Welcome to another video from McFatter Tech Musser. If you like these videos, please click subscribe. Well, welcome to part four of our final experiment, our final project experiment. We're building it out. It's starting to turn into a network now. As you can see highlighted on your screen, uh, initially we set up our routers. We created our WAN link, we created our subnets. And then we additionally set up our domain controller one and our domain controller two. Those are configured now. And then in our third video, we finalized our DNS so we could resolve external DNS. And we also configured our DHCP server. So we're ready to start expanding it even farther. In this video, we're going to set up our DFS servers, our file servers. We're going to have one in each subnet. Using DFS, one server goes down, we can still access our files through the other one. So let me go ahead, I'm going to minimize this, we're going to switch over. So we can see I've already got DFS1 up, and I've already got DFS2 up. They're right here. Now, what I'm going to do is rather than make you sit here and wait for me to rename and set IPs and all that stuff, we've been through that already, right? We know how to set static IPs. We know how to rename and join. I'm going to pause the video, and when I'm going to come back, they're going to be set with their static IPs, they're going to be renamed, and they're going to be joined to the domain. And we'll be ready to start installing a role. So let me pause my video, and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So both servers are up and running. Both of my DFS, what are going to be my file servers, DFS servers, uh, up and running. We can see they're joined to the domain. Uh, this one's on my subnet 1. It's got a 1.3 address. This one's on my subnet 2. It's got a 2.3 address. Remember, make sure we set those static IPs correctly. And then also when we're assigning the DNS servers, make sure we flip-flop the order. Dot one, dot two, make sure that one dot two and two dot two is listed in that order for subnet one and two dot two and one dot two is listed in that order for subnet two. Okay, let's get back over here to DFS one. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to manage add roles and features. We're gonna click next three times like we always do. We're gonna expand our file and storage services and file and iSCSI services. We're going to be installing the DFS namespace. We're going to add those administrative features. We're going to do DFS replication. I'm additionally going to do file server resource manager that allows us to be able to do all sorts of reporting and such, be able to understand what's going on. We can set file screening. We can determine what's allowed, what's not. I'm also going to do the iSCSI target server and iSCSI target storage provider uh, because we're also going to be able to make targets that we can allocate storage to other servers as if it's directly attached even though it's over here. We'll be look, taking a look at that as well. We're going to click next, next, and install. Now I'm only going to do the iSCSI target on this server. I'm not going to do it on the other one. So while that's installing there, I'm going to jump over here to my D final DFS2 to manage, add roles and features, next, 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 expand file and storage services, expand file and iSCSI, and over here we're only going to be selecting DFS namespace and DFS replication. Next, and install, and our installations continuing. While that installs, uh, we can do diff those namespaces different ways. You could point to storage on a web server. Maybe you've got multiple internal web servers, but you only want to make the changes onto one of those. You want to push those changes out to one web server, but you got to update two, three, whatever other web servers. You've got them in different locations. Using this tool, you could create links that are read-only. In other words, it's a push. You make the change here, and it automatically replicates that change out to the other shares. 
That's not bad. We're going to use it for our user files. We're going to be creating creating a redirection for user storage, storing their documents and pictures and such for Active Directory. We'll use a group policy to do this. And we'll do it in DFS. We'll point to the network, not an individual server. We're going to click close. That's done over there. We're going to click close. We're done over here. We're ready to start building out our DFS. <coughs> Excuse me. Where do we find the tools to do it? In tools, yep. Under tools, I'm going to go to DFS management. Takes just a moment to start up. There we are. So we want to publish to a namespace. That allows us to publish that, that data to multiple servers. The namespace exists in Active Directory, not on the individual server. So the first thing I'm going to do is new namespace. And the first server it's going to, that's going to host the namespace will browse. And I'm going to type in final DFS1. We'll check that name. It found it. Click OK. There's our server. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do the fully qualified dot project dot local. We'll click next. What's going to be the name of our namespace? This is going to appear after the name, so it's going to be. In fact, let's go back. I'm going to just. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. You know, I, I used capitals and stuff. I'm going to do it the way it should look. Changing, changing my mind here a little bit. There we go. There's our server. What's going to be the name? My namespace. Well, I'm just going to call. I'm going to call it Final Storage. Oops. There we go. Final Storage. It's going to create a shared folder if necessary. We're going to let it do it. We're going to click Next. It's going to be part of a domain. So it's going to be shared in a domain. It's going to be an active directory. That's what we want. We'll click Next. We can see our settings. Right there, we can see the namespace. And I don't like that. It says project. OK, that's because that's our domain, right? I do like that. Sorry. The first namespace is final DFS1. It's the first place it is going to begin. And you'll see that it's created, it's going to automatically create that, that slash DFS roots under our C root. And then our namespace will exist in that final storage. We're going to have, go ahead and click create. There we go. We're good. We can add other servers. We can expand. We can see our namespace right there. Here's our namespace servers. We can add a namespace server. What else hosts DS, DFS? Well, our final DFS2. So I'm going to do final DFS2. And I'm going to click OK. Contacting the server. Let's expand those details. Oh, there we are. Ooh, error. Verify server name. Validate true shared folder. Error contacting the server. Wonder why that was. Let's browse. Let's see if we can find it this way. Can't be found. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's quickly jump over to our DC1. Let's take a look in Active Directory. This is part of what we do, right? We don't build this stuff very often, but we do manage it all the time. There's my DFS1. 
I bet you I know what's going on. Let's take a look here. Let's jump over to DC2. I bet you it's joined over there, but the replication hasn't happened yet. to my users and computers. A duck. Computers. It shows up, they both show up here. What's going on? Let's jump back over here. Let's refresh. I'm gonna jump over to sites and services. That's interesting. DC2, both of them show up. But on DC1, only one. Let's expand our sites out. I'm going to expand our subnets and our servers. And I'm going to force some replication. And we'll come over here and we'll force some replication. Now it's there. For whatever reason, it just didn't happen. Maybe it was I just the schedule just wasn't quite right. We'll go ahead and we'll close that. We'll close DC2. Now, if I check the name, there we are. We'll click OK. Contacting. Still an error. Hmm. Let's close the wizard. Let's redo it. Add namespace server. Final DFS2. Check the name. That's interesting. I'm going to have to troubleshoot this. Could be a replication issue. You know what? When in doubt, I installed new roles. I'm going to restart these two servers. Sometimes that's what it takes. This is the good stuff. This is this is what we do. This is management, right? Like I said, we install once in a while. We create once in a while. Just knowing what to do when things go wrong. While we're coming up, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Don't need to sit here and watch this turn away. Okay, so I was seeing some errors. So we're working in a virtual environment. Sometimes it's a little flaky. If you, know, if you excuse, excuse the term. Um, so what I did was I shut down both final DFS1 and DFS2. I then shut down final DHCP. I shut down final DC2. I shut down final DC1. I restarted DC1, restarted DC2, let them come up, logged into both, ran DC Diag space slash E to check all diagnostics for the domain. Did see some errors as I expected because I had problems in beforehand, right? But you know what? I said, you know what? Let me start DFS1. Let me start DFS2. Logged into both. And I was able to add the second server. Sometimes you just need to restart. Maybe I needed to restart the DFS servers after the installation of the roles. It's not a bad practice. At this point, it's late in the day. I'm going to pause this video. And when I return, we're going to start building out. We're going to create replication. 
between those folders. Right now, we just have them as part of the namespace. We're going to add the replication. So if a file gets added over here, it automatically appears over here. The great thing about DFS also is once you've got that replication in place, you've got the files shared out, I may have a massive document over here that exists on both servers, right? And I open that document and I make a little change. Do I have to replicate the entire document? No. The only thing that gets replicated is the change. So it's very efficient. We're going to take a look at that in, in a later portion of this video. Uh, I don't want these videos to run too long. So you know what? The more I think about it, we've got our rep, we've got our namespace in place. Let's see if we can do that replication right now. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to end this video and then we're going to build on it in our next video. Let's do this at new replication group. Multipurpose, we're going to click next. Name of it is going to be, um, I'm just going to call it project rep for replication. Why not? We'll click next. We're going to add our servers. Final. DFS1. Check names. Final DFS2. Check name. There we go. We'll click OK. That's going to add both our servers as replication partners. Check the members. I don't like that it's taking that long. I still have another problem. Shouldn't take that long. Oh, nope, there it is. We're good. Click next. If we had many, many, we could create full mesh topology. Information meshed throughout. Or we could do hub and spoke. There's different ways that we can do this. Since we've only got the two, we're doing the, the, the mesh. We'll use full bandwidth. We could limit bandwidth. We could specify when replication takes place. We'll click next. What's the primary member? Oh, well, number one, DFS1, it's going to be the primary. We'll click next. Now we have to specify the a folder that we want to replicate. This is not our namespace. This is folders that we want to replicate. So I'm going to say add. And where's the path? We want to create a path. I'm going to I'm going to go into my C, and we're going to call. We're going to make a new folder under C, and we're going to call it user share. So this is we're going to be sharing user folders. We're going to click OK. There it is. I'm going to leave our default permissions. I'm just going to leave them the way they are. That's on the primary member. You see it says select a folder on the primary member you want to replicate two other members. Click next. Specify the path of the replicated folder or whether the folder is read only. Select the appropriate member and then click edit. So you see it's pointing to DFS2. We're going to click edit. We're going to say it's going to be enabled. This is where you could make it read only. So you could send but not be able to receive. I'm going to browse here again. Does it have to be the same folder name? That's usually a pretty good idea. User share. I'll select that. Click OK. There's are two folders on our two different servers. Next, we can see a synopsis of what our settings are going to be, and we'll create. Bingo. We now have replication. Anything I put in one user share will appear in the other. We'll click close. Replication won't begin until it's picked up by the members. So it may be take a little time. So this is not one thing I want to. I don't jump. Oh, oh, oh. Why is it? Oh, why is it not? Oh, is it why? No. Nah. This is when we just step back. We say, you know what? Just let it take place. Before we go, I'm going to go into that user share. And I'm just going to create a couple dummy documents. Uh, so I'm going to do new, uh, let's see here. 
That's interesting. New, okay, new folder, and I'm going to call it uh, user1. Okay, user1. Let's see if I can create any documents in here. And yeah, now I can. Oh, we'll do the default bitmap. We're going to, got to remember that's the root. That was the root of what was being replicated. We'll do a text document, and we'll do one more. We'll do a a, a, a rich text document. Before we go, I'm just going to jump over here. I don't know whether that replication's happening yet or not, but let's take a look. See if anything happened over here in DFS2. No, nope, see the folder's not there yet. Replication hasn't happened yet. I'm not going to force it. I'm, not, I'm just going to walk away. Just walk away. At this point, I'm going to end the video. We'll come back with our next part, and we'll see where this is going. All right? Everybody, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great one, everybody.